So, you know, I'm watching the Cavs last night, and I told a story. I went out with my wife to dinner, and uh, um, I'm not working tomorrow or the next day, and I knew today I wasn't on TV, so it's a screw-off radio day. And I was going, yeah, I don't know, I'll watch a little NBA when I get home, and the Cavs OKC was on, and I watched the last hour and a half. And I'm telling you, the energy LeBron's playing with, I really like this Cleveland team. I like them a lot. And uh, they're young. It's a bunch of guys that want to prove something. Larry Nance, Jordan Clarkson, George Hill, Rodney Hood. They all kind of feel like they got slighted by the Lakers. Uh, they were buried in Sacramento. Rodney Hood's like, excuse me? You're going to give me up? You got some guys here. They may be B- minus C plus guys, but they play with a little chip on their shoulder. I really like what I see from Cleveland, Joe Varden's a Cavs reporter, Cleveland.com, Cleveland Plain Dealer, one of the oldest newspapers in America. Joe, how are you doing today? Well, I'm feeling okay, a little slighted that you saved me for your screw-off radio. <laughs> well, when we, when we do on radio only, I can bring reporters on it. I don't have to see it, and we can just chat. But I, I did watch that game last night, and listen, if nothing else, Joe, we would have to agree LeBron's energy – the last two games is completely different, right? Well, yeah. I mean, energy, spirit, um, and he's he's been talking a lot more about leadership, which is, you know, that word's a cliche. I get it. Um, but I think he feels a, um, a somewhat of a sense of responsibility, not all the way, but somewhat for what happened before, that he sees his role and kind of where he came up short in allowing – the Cavs to turn into a total dumpster fire. Um, and, and, and he didn't play. He didn't play hard in, in January. And so he's back um, as good as he was in November and December. And, and yeah, it's, it's a, it's a totally it's a different team. We were saying last night, this is like a different job that all of us have who cover them. I mean, it's a totally, totally different look. You know, in January, it's no secret. It's well-documented. Multiple sources have said that Dan Gilbert and LeBron um, you know, it's it's not ideal. They, there's still some resentment here. Uh, you know, Gilbert's probably resentful saying, I'm paying this huge salary tax and you're complaining and we're getting guys you want and you're complaining. And LeBron's probably thinking like, man, you saddled me with a bunch of bad contracts and you couldn't figure out the Kyrie thing and Isaiah Thomas was a disaster. So I get the resentment on both sides. I'm more of a LeBron guy than a Dan Gilbert guy, but I get the resentment. Do you think... I mean, when it, it let's say Le, I, I think now Cleveland's better than Boston. Do you think that's irreparable? That even if they beat Boston, get to the finals, maybe lose, but they push the Warriors five or six in the city of Cleveland, Joe, in which you work, you've got sourcing there. You know people in town. Is Gilbert LeBron as bad as they say? Well, so, so here here is the problem with that question. When, when we say. Is it as bad as they say? It, it suggests that at one time it was good, um, and that that suggestion is not correct. Um, Dan and LeBron entered into a business relationship when LeBron agreed to come home. They still have a business relationship. Um, they have had some disagreements, sometimes petty, sometimes real, over the past four years uh, about that business. Um, and things got really hot leading up to the trade deadline about that, about, you know, some of those disagreements, but th they never liked each other. They still don't like each other. This was never about like them agreeing to forgive and forget about the past. No, this was about coming, coming together to try to win here in Cleveland, which they did before and they can still do now. And so, you know, what happened on Thursday was, was very important for LeBron's future because without asking him for the commitment that Dan sought, they went and did what LeBron wanted them to do, which was invest further in the team and get younger and get pieces that LeBron feels uh, make them a more effective team against the Warriors. Were you shocked with what Kobe Altman did? Do you believe that was, a, as you just said, it's a LeBron directive, not a Dan Gilbert directive? Do you think Dan Gilbert, when Kobe Altman comes to him and says, we got to blow this thing up, did Dan Gilbert push back? I mean, who was ultimately, how did it, because Kobe Altman's not doing it on his own. Somebody's giving him a directive. How do you think that all started? No, I, I think that this, uh, I mean, I've said this, you know, on Twitter and and uh, I'm going to write something uh, for the weekend about this. But th that really was kind of the day and the week and the month that Kobe 
affirmed himself as the general manager and the basketball sort of director of, of this franchise. Um, these moves were, were Kobe's. Uh, he and his staff targeted these players. Um, they cultivated the deals. They put them all together. They took them to Dan uh, with the with all with the reams of of uh, you know of evidence that that they have that what the, what was going on wasn't working. And Dan, you know, it's been reported now, um, you know, that 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 his son is very sick, and that that's what Dan was dealing with last week. You know, Dan was at the hospital with his son who's having brain surgery this week. So this was a Kobe thing, and and Kobe did a you know, I, I mean. He did it. I mean, he, you know, he found guys who are under contract. They're young. They're fast. Um, they're not always going to shoot sixty-five percent from the field like <laughs> they have the last two games. But yeah. you know, he he did it. He did yeah. a good job. No, I mean, listen, this Cavs team, uh, Joe Joe Varden joining us, Cleveland Plain Dealer. It's got eight guys, eight seven or eight guys that if they scored twenty, you wouldn't be shocked. LeBron, eventually Kevin Love, Rodney Hood, George Hill, Kyle Korver, J.R. Smith, Jeff Green. The, I don't think Boston, outside of Kyrie Irving. Um, if he's not shooting well, I think Boston's completely limited offensively. In fact, they're like 25th in efficiency, and that's with Brad Stevens, who's a great coach. So w- I look at this, and I and I, I brought this thing out called the Lebronzo meter because I do think L.A. is one of the two or three landing spots. But I've always felt, Joe, and again, you're going to Cleveland restaurants. You know the people in the city. I've always felt deep down that LeBron wants to stay in Cleveland because it's his home. He's got his house. It's his friends. I mean, how is that when you when you dig deep into LeBron? Do you be, and I believe it's like a sixty forty thing that he wants to stay in Cleveland. I ideally, do you believe that? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, and and he, there's a couple of things. You know, one when he came back uh, in 2014, he said any number of times that that I'm I'm this is this is it for me. This is where I'm going to be. Uh, in September, af- after a summer long of rumors about L.A. and wherever else, um, I asked him at Media Day, uh, is it still your intention to stay in Cleveland, to retire in Cleveland? He said, yes, it was. He reaffirmed it. Um, you know, as recently as the other day, like LeBron talking to myself and a couple of the other guys who have been traveling with him for years, is talking about uh, this, uh conversations that he and his wife are having about life in Ohio, you know, like decisions that they have to make for their family that, that would be made in Ohio. Like, so living in Ohio is on their brain. Okay. Like they could move, they could move to LA um, certainly. And, you know, the the basketball situation was getting really bad really quickly here. And that's going to be very important to him, but this is a major, huge life life's decision. There's many things beyond basketball. Um, but the basketball situation got better here. And as you said, he's already, he's from here. He's more comfortable here. Like, you know, there are, there is certainly a case to be made that, that he would stay and that's what he wants to do. Hey, by the way, Joe, a minute left, uh, Joe Varden, check him out. Uh, writer, cleveland.com about a minute left. Isaiah Thomas thing was just a mess. Uh, he called out Kevin Love at a meeting, and we were joking. If you got to a new company, Joe, you or I did, and it was our first month in the company, we wouldn't be calling out longtime employees in meetings. I, Isaiah Thomas was a disaster. Could you tell instantly that LeBron just wasn't good with it? Yeah, um, and I think LeBron wasn't good with it in the days leading up to Isaiah's return, almost like he, he knew what was coming. Um, but it wasn't just Isaiah. There were other guys in that locker room who went after Kevin. There are other guys who were upset with the coaches for various reasons. It, this thing was totally off the rails. Isaiah was a major reason for it, but not the only reason for it. Yeah. Hey, Joe, great stuff. I promised to bring you on. When, you, when, when you're in town next, why don't you call my producers and we'll put you on TV so you don't feel slighted as just being a, <laughs> a, just a radio guy because I love when you bring to the table. you got great sourcing. I appreciate it, Joe. All right, Colin. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.